Are we good? We're good. Okay, so we're gonna start in five. So we're gonna start. We're gonna start at the beginning. Who the? Who is Toby McGuire? Oh, if you don't mind, then I really don't care. There's a symbiote clone in my silly old hair. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, look like Toby McGuire. Only desires to get my homies inspired. Friendly neighborhood, who? Friendly neighborhood, who? Yeah. Put some respect oh, on Seabiscuit. Damn. Hey, all right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Toby, Toby, Toby. Toby, Toby, Toby. Where we're going to be talking about number one, Toby McGuire, the man where he's from, his career, what led him to Spider-Man, the myth, man. the rumors, the lawsuits, hey, hey. the poker championships, the divorces. <laughs> oh, we're right. going to be getting into all of that. But then finally, we're going to be talking about Tobey Maguire, the song, yeah. and how my co-host here, which we'll get to in a second, had a prophecy, and they made it come true. So, <laughs> like Candyman or Beetlejuice, but they had to say it way too many Candyman, times. Candyman, Candyman, Candyman. Yeah, my name is Jason Hillman. I'm a, a local comic and producer and photographer. My co-hosts today include uh, Reno Kristoff. I've never actually said your name out loud. No, you sound sounds like an weird. enforcer for sounds, a, like a small town strange. Jersey mob. <laughs> also known as... Hey, it's a Reno Cristo. Oh, no, don't send Reno. Oh, God. Uh, also goes by the name Slang Troubadour, local MC. Hey, hot hey. stuff. Hey. Do How things. you doing? Doing good. Doing good. I'm all tobed up. He's only local. Yeah, all tobed up. He's so high on Toby. This was high on Toby, high on Spider-Man. That's good to hear. And also, I'm joined by local producer extraordinaire, our <laughs> local Milwaukee Jewish space laser, Moses. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I mean, let's really get into it. How did the, how did we end up in this booth in the first place? How did we start talking about this? Why are we talking about Toby McGuire? Tell me more. Because he's the best. Toby McGuire is. In me and Mo's opinion slash universal law, it's as the best Spider-Man ever, and uh, it's pretty irrefutable. Um, yeah, we're just we're just inspired inspired by the Tobe Man one night, and we got we got we were, I think we were, we didn't it was like two a.m. so we we're getting a little delirious, and we cranked out <laughs> cranked out the, the track, and we we brought Toby back to the big screen, you know. Well, you know, it all started when we we talk we were talking about Spider-Man, and then like. For some reason, what we were talking about him, and then it was just like, well, yeah, because like Spider Man Two. He was like, what Spider Man Two? Tell me why. Yeah. It was it was it was really random. We it was both, a bonding moment. We both it was brought up, and we both like instantly were like, yeah, Spider Man Two. Fucking Spider Man Two. Spider-Man, you you say no yeah. more. Yeah. So like, it's uh, fate, destiny. How do you want to call it? Right, because Spider Man Two is like probably still one of the best comic book movies ever made. Oh yeah. Just yeah. standalone, doesn't try to build a universe outside of itself. Just a masterpiece. He's yeah. in his feelings, and he did. has lots going on, and he's yeah. complex. It's a very. It's right. probably the like the most. It's, right. People look at Garden State as like the complex. seminal emo movie of oh, that time period. It's Spider Man Two for sure. What is? What Spider Man? Garden, Garden State. State. Everyone oh, talks no, about you've oh, never seen Garden State. It's the Spider Man the 2 of, the youth these of Zach days. Braff movies. <laughs> Ugh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's the Spider Man 2 of like existential on Wii movies for people in their 20s. Like, I don't know yeah. what I gotta do. I gotta find a girl to put all my emotions into and she'll help me. Another thing. The emotions into. Mm -hmm. e emotions, whatever. With my love gun. <laughs> yeah. So you guys were talking Got about him. Spider Man. So you came up with Spider Man or Tobey Maguire, the song. But like, why are you so obsessed with Tobey Maguire to begin with? Because Spider-Man Two. Why wouldn't you be Spider-Man? Was, I mean, was that your first encounter with him? Because uh, there's more. Well, Spider-Man One. <laughs> Have you seen any movie with Tobey Maguire outside of Spider-Man though? The 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 horse movie. What's the sea horse biscuit. movie? Sea biscuit. Sea biscuit. Put some respect on Sea Biscuit. Thank you. Damn. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I, say I don't, really, to your I don't remember that movie though. I was too young to like remember it, so <sighs> I didn't. Sea Biscuit. Dude. I, I was. I don't know, man. No, Triple is, Crown. He, I think he rode horses. Triple Crown. Doing so, but what was your first encounter with Tobey Maguire? Spider Man. Yes. Yeah, okay. So yeah. that's okay. Yeah. And then since then, you've never seen him in anything else. Well, then. So to him, he is no, he is well, Tobey Maguire. Like Tobey no, Maguire. He was in something with Peter Leonardo Parker. DiCaprio after Spider Man. He was. Yeah. No, that that was the Great Gatsby, yeah. right? With Leonardo oh, DiCaprio and yes. Baz Luhrmann. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I love right. Baz Luhrmann. I could have at home. We I could do an entire podcast on that dude. He did Romeo and Juliet, Moulin Rouge. He's an insane person. 
I've never seen cocaine so eloquently put into something. <laughs> well, you know, uh, when you're a pro. Have you ever seen Romeo and Juliet? Which one? The Buzz Lerman's. Is that the what, one... like, the guns? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, they showed it to me, showed it to us in high school for some reason. It was so fucking ridiculous. And that's and that's back when Leonardo DiCaprio, that's when Tobey Maguire and Leonardo, so Le, Tobey Maguire, let's get into his early career here. Okay. Let's Before Spider-Man, there was this, more. like, him and Leonardo DiCaprio were part of this, like, roving band of like fuck banshees that would basically just run around Hollywood with a bunch of like slightly less other talented dudes that were kind of feeding off of them the way that like krill feed off of an alligator's jaws you gotta have your hands or off of a whale's of a whale's mouth I mean uh yeah and so that's where Tobey Maguire comes from and at the time um that's how he ended up in the horse <laughs> <laughs> well, really? yeah. but that's how him so the that's horse when Lee, when uh, Leonardo, Di- there's a there's a small movie, an independent black and white movie that has Leonardo DiCaprio, Tobey Maguire, and some dude from Entourage. Ooh. That's like nobody's allowed to see it. Leonardo DiCaprio did everything in his power to bury it because it's him and Tobey Maguire basically is like, yeah, we fuck. Oh, <laughs> at like a diner, a diner. But they uh, do. We should. Huh? We should. They do. do. They do fuck. Yeah, they do fuck. They're yeah. bragging about it, and Le- so they they, they tried fuck. they tried to hide it to make it seem like they don't fuck as much. So, <laughs> depends so how many times you get tried, chlamydia. Really tried to portray himself as like this squeaky clean dude, and so and like so did Leonardo DiCaprio after Titanic, and then uh-huh. even with the beach, he was like, "I'm an artist." <laughs> he was really just a scummy young dude who happened to be good at acting. Uh, I love it. I don't so see for, Toby as a pussy monster, but I'm happy about it. But that's the best part. He's <laughs> just a monster. Period, which we will get into. <laughs> yeah, I'm winning all sorts of things. I like. But it. he's also our hero. He's also the he's hero, our, yeah. Because he's the villain he's, and the hero all at the same time. He's just like what you, uh, we were talking the about anti-hero. before. Uh, which, like, Tobey Maguire is the kind of person who will cheat, but he'll make you think that you're not cheating. Like, okay, yeah, I'm jumping ahead of myself. We're I'm jumping so into the poker part of it. <laughs> wow. So we're gonna start. We're gonna start at the beginning. I who love. The fuck is Tobey? Yeah. Who is Tobey Maguire? I love. You know what? I'll tell you the first time I remember hey, Tobey Maguire. Shit. He was in a movie called SFW with Stephen Dorff and Reese Witherspoon. I wish it was NSFW, but whatever. You know. It stands for so fucking what? And it was about what? this. It was about <laughs> this. Uh, these two. These group of people that get stuck in this convenience store and then held hostage for like a month, and then they get out and they become heroes. And uh, Tobey Maguire plays one of his burnout friends who ends up showing up and then throwing right. something at him and then he gets beat up or something. I forget how it ends. But that's the first time I saw Tobey Maguire. It's an inspirational film. Really good stuff. Stephen yeah. Dorff, remember him? Deacon Ste- Frost? Stephen Dorff, yeah. He's a, yeah, yeah. He, he, he fucks. He also fucks. In 1995, <laughs> Tobey Maguire was cast in a leading role in the film Empire Records, but due to his problems with alcoholism, he was pulled out of the film midway. What? what? When was that? Oh, man, I wish we had a sound effect booth for that. How yeah. old was he? I just he? did it, bro. Oh, yep. <laughs> How well, old was he? Yeah, at the time. Old enough to know better. Probably in his 20s? 19. Old enough to know that. Thanks, my life. <laughs> you think he was 19? What do you think? I'm just thinking like 20, 21. Y'all know about that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. It doesn't even, doesn't even mention. Okay, so that's Damn. when he was cast in 2002 in Spider-Man, when he changed your life. Boom. Oh, yeah. I was seven. You were seven, seven years seven old. Seven years old. Damn. Seven years old. Yeah. How did you Damn. See wait, wait, wait. Hold that thought. And with a flash, Slang Troubadour is out the door, getting super props to bring <laughs> into context. <laughs> there he is, a caricature as Spider-Man. Two thousand two, seven years old. Seven years old. And that, that, is young and there he is. that is incredible. Who drew that? Venom, uh, some caricature uh, drawer. You some some caricature <laughs> guy. Why do you have a sling blade? Uh, I think Disneyland. Hey, I make caricatures. A caricature. Do you want a caricature? I've been kirking and chirking. Yeah, that's uh, Venom. that's I that's a with that. opposite jerk. That's Sorry. a boner kill, but hey. He cute though, I guess. Yeah. As far as know. caricatures. Kind of look like Toby, right? I'd say it's so. Did you read Spider-Man comics, or did you get into Spider-Man through Spider-Man the what? movie? Did you get into Spider-Man Shit. through the film? Yeah. What, what, what turned you on to Spidey? Other um, than the tights. <laughs> I never, I never had access to like the real shit comics, but I would like see the images and be like really fucking into them, and like I'd like them, but they're like expensive, and like my mom would get me like books that were like Spider-Man comics, but they weren't like the 
Spider-Man comics. It would be like some other Spider-Man book, more for kids maybe. I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily be comics though. Nah, you but that like was like Spider-Man the raw shit. You, that was like the shit. She got Spider-Man coloring books. No, <laughs> pretty and, like, much. Like little sticker books and shit. Not coloring books, but any it. I don't know. I had a diff- I had like a book the that Green had like. Green Goblin is stealing from the children in the hospital. <laughs> Spider-Man's gotta save the day. Also, Spider-Man sixty four. Wow. Was a dope ass Spider-Man game that got me a little Venom yeah, Venom obsessed. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I, I I I was it was Spider-Man for Super Nintendo for me. Nice. I don't know if y'all remember that one. Yeah. That's dope. <laughs> you mean yeah. Max- like yeah. Maximum Carnage, like those, like the side scroller? Uh, yeah, one? it was like a side yeah. scroller. Yeah. You oh, fucking shit, that was like, a game. I need to play jump that down. Green Goblin was in it. Yeah, you could like swing on shit oh, and fuck. do the whole thing. Yeah, it was a side scroller. It was tight. Yeah. That shit it was like it was like Mega Man kind of kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, shit cracked. I gotta get it, that. It was yeah. tight. It was what, old school. Was it I, Maximum Carnage? Is that it? Uh, let's flash back one, in time and go. I don't think so, but we can ask five year old me and we can so, figure it out. That's but, some of my because I think there was an Avengers. There's a Spider Man yeah, game. Oh yeah, and Xavier then was, Ruffin uh, doing the Googs. And then there was doing a the Maximum Googs. Carnage game. Then it came in like an orange cartridge. Oh, that game was fantastic. I just remember a, I didn't know shit, but it was tight. The Spider Man <laughs> game is awesome. Like those were the. I feel they like were it was kind of creeped out by it. Did it have, I feel like did it it was Carnage good. in it, bro. I you probably don't didn't even. I probably didn't even play long Dude, enough to. I could. I could go another twenty years, and I'll still remember like the fucking. I didn't. I didn't play it extensively. Shit. I didn't own it. I think it was like a blockbuster thing. Yeah. Gotcha. But it was just. It was just like, oh, this is tight. And I mean, yeah, because like I, I, I grew up on like the OG best cartoon of all time, which was the '90s Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah! And that's I love that's, that shit. That's what I. It was, I, went, you I know, had to went, I had to go back and, on YouTube and watch all that I shit. Know. But I made I made sure <laughs> he's was a whipper snapper hands. Uh yeah yeah I you know that was that was Sunday or Saturday morning like cartoons Dude, type shit they or fucking whatever. went in on those cartoons. Yo, funny story about that too is like so uh, I grew up on a scrapyard, family business, yada yada yada. But I would get there mad early in the morning because like well, my pops would get there at like three in the morning, four in the morning sometimes. But you know when right. I was with him custody, I'd get to, he, he would ex- he would like you know extend it to like maybe I we get there at like seven. Yeah. So. I get there, you know, st- clocking at eight or whatever uh, for work. So, but then this, this is do Ronaldo. Ronaldo was the homie. He didn't have his two front oh, teeth, yeah. and uh, he was just like the coolest guy. Um, <laughs> the teeth don't matter, but that's just like funny context. Uh, but yeah, we'd kick it in the in the lunch room or break room or whatever because I'd be having my cereal, and then he'd have his cereal too, and we would just watch. We had this old big fucking like with the knobs and like rabbit ears and shit. TV. Nothing better than serial and morning cartoons. On a fucking knob joint too. Mm-hmm. Old ass TV. And yeah, he was obsessed. He was obsessed with uh, with Spider Man. That's why we're here. Every every fucking morning uh when I was there. Dude, we'd uh had fucking it was Adam me and fucking and Ronaldo shit. watching Spider Man, the nineties Spider Man eating fucking cereal, dude. That shit was that shit was the sh- that was the shit, man. Oh man. I that show was so good. Oh, it was the best. It's, it's the Spider-Man been. games on the SNES, those side, these these isometric side scroller games were the best. Uh, they had an X-Men one, they had an Avengers one, they had uh, the Spider-Man, and then they had the uh, Maximum Carnage. Oh, those the same and ones. And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. Oh, bro, trust. That yeah. that whole genre <laughs> of game is perfect. They might did they have one for for NES? Uh, they tried to do two Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the arcade game on the NES. Oh, I have I mean, it. They did the best they could. Oh, that shit's tight. Yeah, man. it's so it's yeah. still good. It's just you know it glitched like an NNS. NES. I mean, yeah, I, don't I would know. love to go back and do a retro like a stream a playthrough of that with like four people. I still have my NES that works. Let's and stream. Let's absolutely let's do, do that. that. Okay. I'm yeah. blowing those cartridges like a That's two dollar. That's gonna be the whole next podcast I wanna, episode. I want to talk about. We're just playing. <laughs> if you have an o- original copy of Maximum Carnage sealed up. It is worth twenty five hundred dollars right now. Damn. That is a real thing. All right, all right. I was trying to find images and I found. But would this. you sell it though? Would you sell it? Uh, that's a good question. It depends on what kind of well, situation I'm in, I guess. I'm <laughs> that's. How much is it worth with a broken seal, though? <laughs> yeah. How much is it worth with a broken seal? Two seventy five. Yeah. Exactly. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> let me just find bullshit copy. Depends how many blows it takes to get it to work. <laughs> 
I'm not even making a joke. I know. <laughs> That's the thing, you know. Some 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 of the old games, depending on like the con, like how you had them stored, like oh man, you need like 20 blows and it might still not work. Others are like oh man, give it like a two joint and. But here's a hack, game genie. All right. Game. Oh yeah, Spider-Man Maximum Carnage without the box. Who gives a shit? Twenty-two fifty with the box without the seal. One seventy-four. <laughs> so it goes up quite a bit. It goes up to five thousand dollars on this one, brand new factory sealed without any extra tags on it. Five thousand dollars. People are not bidding on it though. So, huh. shit, better scoop that. Uh, I mean, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. they don't get it right now. You know, it would be blow my mind if Tobey Maguire was playing Maximum Carnage or making playing Carnage instead of Woody Harrelson. <laughs> Wow. Woody Harrelson. Wait, just Woody's showed... playing Carnage? Yeah, yeah Woody's dude. playing Carnage in uh, the second Venom. <laughs> that's kind of cracking. It, yeah, man. It makes that's no sense. Red, he's that's got the red wig. Crack. That's one of those cocaine decisions. Did you see? <laughs> did Woody. you see the uh, the extra credit scene from? I haven't Venom. seen Venom yet. Oh, it's. Ven, 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 venom. Ven, ven, venom. Have you seen Upgrade? Ven, ven, ven. Huh? Have you ever seen Upgrade? It's a sci-fi movie. I just think that's... of Beyonce when you say that. Okay. I I don't know what the... what's Upgrade. It's a it's a sci-fi movie. I saw the about trailer a dude for that. has got a chip in his brain that Ooh. talks to him and then beats up people for him. It's like Venom, but more mechanical. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I saw the it trailer like, for It's that. like you know how like Volcano comes out and then Dante's Peak comes out and then Mars Attacks <laughs> comes out and Independence Day comes out and the Astro. Pierce Brosnan's kind of in Dante's Peak. That's right, another so reason why I love that movie. movie. More importantly, it's... Linda Hamilton's in Dante's Peak. Yeah, upgrade. He's got like a chip in the back oh. of his yeah. spine or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Word. I oh, give it to a, you. It's, my it's husk. like shot on a shoestring budget, and it is a great movie. <laughs> um, I, um, I just wanna, just wanna reiterate, we're also here because, of course, Tobey Maguire is making his grand return, Spider-Man Three. Air horn, air horn, air Hopefully, everybody air knows air that, but we should probably say that. That was a terrible air horn. <laughs> Toby's coming back, and Andrew Garfield, but man. So, Toby. Toby, so an- another reason that we are here is because Spider-Man 3 is turning out to be some kind of live action into the Spider-Verse. But it started with Sam Raimi, the original director of the Spider-Man films, coming in and co- to direct Doctor Strange <laughs> 2, t- replacing Scott Derrickson. Yeah. So right. he is getting basically his opportunity to make Spider-Man 4 and also influence the MCU going forward. He's Who? introducing horror elements, Sam Raimi. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, so Welcome, I can't, welcoming him to back. His directing style applied to a, a, a Marvel movie, MCU movie. Yeah, yeah. Because he Spider-Man Two was so very Evil Dead-y. It had a lot of Evil Dead-like shots, especially when he's on the surgery table. It's yeah, one of my shit. favorite shots in comic books when it like reaches across the room and it follows the, op- oh, the octopus yeah. arm. Mm-hmm. It's one of my I favorites. Fucking love it. And so he's gonna. I want to see that kind of filmmaking, that kind of low budget, lo fi, high budget filmmaking applied to MCU's kind of stay at formula. Oh, I can't wait. Which I'm actually shocked by yeah. since WandaVision is fucking me up. Ooh, I gotta watch so, episode I didn't five. Watch, I didn't watch the latest episode, same. so let's same. let's keep it at least. Yeah, to yeah same, episode same. three. Oh, okay. three? You're too oh, behind. Uh, okay. Well, nah, I saw last week, so that would be four. Okay. Like, yeah. Like it was. In, I watched four. They broke the formula on four. Yeah. Right. I right. Right. One. Right. I didn't watch. Five, yeah. 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 So we're in the same spot. It's very, it's very interesting. Uh, it, it, it's great to see like regular like sitcom television come back and just like have that moment of like yeah. this feels like the Andy Griffith show. Yeah. Like hell yeah. It takes me back to my childhood and, and watch everyone else be like, what is this? I don't understand. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like shut the fuck up. It is what yeah. it is. And then like, like I'm sitting there just making predictions this whole time. Right. About, like mm, I think I know what's gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> Watching Basically. those tropes be used in the service of some like huge, gra- like, grandiose plot is so. Yeah. It's a. Uh, how old are you? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, I'm like uh, 33. Yeah, so it's You're like 33. The, the things that we grew. Well, up I with. mean, it's weird because right in America, and since this is a podcast, I'm gonna tangent. Yeah. Um, yes, please. Because like in America, we start counting like once you hit your first year of birth. Now you're one. But like in Asia, they're like, no, this is your first year. You're one when you're oh, born. Right. Yeah. Right? And right. then your second year, you're two. You're never your less third than one. Year, yeah. <laughs> you're never so like six months. it would be like, months, in Japan, not... I'd say, I'm in my 34th year of life. Right. But in America, I'm like, no, I'm 33 years old. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm 33 plus however long it's been since. Word. You know. And time is a construct. True. I'm, I'm 
I am that I am and that I always was and always will be just in this form in the present. Yeah, just getting just getting crankier, you know. Eventually, <laughs> crankier yeah. and crankier. We all just get crankier. That's it. Just, that's all that happens. You I get crankier know, and crankier. Sure. The, the, more, the more time has has <laughs> down over the last year, like the the time as an illusion definitely worked for me when when everything was working normally. But over the last year, it has sl- become so malleable and become such a non concept as to like be almost a joke now right. to take anything seriously, anything besides time seriously now. Yeah. Um, Oh, that's but great. back to Wandavision. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, to watch, <laughs> so to see to watch the things we grew up with recontextualized in this. First off, uh, Endgame was the most spectacular comic book event I could have ever imagined. I didn't know where they were going to go from there. How right. do you top this? Right. Scale it back. Take all of this nostalgia that's been weaponized against us for so long and put it into something that's actually interesting. Mm. It has this. I love this introduction yeah. of this, inter- this this underlying layer of tension. It's especially in the black and white episodes. Yeah. Like that creepiness Ooh, that's yeah. starting to get in there. Like yeah, that right. Candyman moment that happened, mm-hmm. right? And then it's like the slowly the the unveiling of what it is. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And then like when you're when you're yeah. watching it in in tow, like as it's happening, you're like, okay, who's breaking the wall here? Right. Right. Yeah. Who who's the one that's breaking right. the wall? Yeah. And then and then it's like. And then when they reveal, it's like, ah. Yeah. Huh. Well, oh on our God, I need you <laughs> to episode we saw, because so. I have to, sh- I have to shut up now because yeah. like what you're talking about, mm-hmm, but I can't, mm, mm, mm-hmm, right? Because yeah. mm-hmm, the last two episodes, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, no, recontextualizing <laughs> these things in. we grew up with, even even the nostalgia for the things we did not grow up with, mm. we grew up with, with like commercials for reruns of them and right. our grandparents talking about them. So even watching. The things my grandparents fas- were fascinated by, recontextualized like this, and used in service to um, uh, to this kind of plot, I think is genius uh, on their part. Kind of so introducing yeah, horror, like all those Hydra commercials and stuff. Yeah, like that. oh hell yeah, oh, man, it's so. And they went bonkers. Like, which direction do we go? I don't. Do what you will, and they and it actually makes sense, yeah. which is the most challenging part for something as grossly audacious it's so following bonkers. Endgame. it's so bonkers yeah yeah which was pretty straightforward for all its time travel convolutions it was a pretty straightforward plot yeah this mm-hmm. is this challenges the audience but doesn't doesn't condescend to them which is a really hard line to walk yeah. um and it's doing such a good time job. travel in movies is hard yeah right uh, Endgame kept it pretty sweet and simple for the most part yeah. Uh, what was another movie that just came out that did uh, Tenet? I still haven't seen Tenet. I'm, I, I, I was the supposed to get The soundtrack is my favorite soundtrack of last. <laughs>